So when Ridley brings you in at the beginning, how does the collaboration start? I first met Ridley and he just sort of talked his way through things like some of the cast he had at that stage and we looked at pictures of them, you know, yeah. and then we started talking about what they would do as astronauts, what are the practicalities of being in space. And then I started looking at the photos of all the NASA astronauts and thinking, you know, they were quite straight people, like sort of military almost to mm -hmm. me. Things. And so Ridley was sort of going, you know, I think he'd look really good with this and she'd look really good. I do mood boards or I did lots of um, little thumbnails of different styles and things. And, and so you, when you're making a mood board, you're looking for pictures and ideas that help guide you towards the characters Yeah, and, that, and I look, when I present a mood board, I sort of watch what a director goes towards. Like they're always drawn towards certain things. I that, see, right. You know, you're trying to get, I guess, what their vision is and understand it and be able to take it and, and look at it from a practical point of view. And, and also timeless, you want things to be timeless. You don't want it yeah. to date itself. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow, it hadn't occurred yeah. to me, of course that's yeah. a concern. Because that, that's what happens with a lot of things when you look back on them, you know, they, you, they're really set in a time like the 80s or the 50s or, you know. Do you have a, there's no single guideline for that, is there? No, you just have to sort of try and make it timeless, you right. know, and sort of go like, you look at you and go, why is your hair like that? And why do you grow your beard like that? And, you know, why is he got stubble? It's like every yeah. personality has different things they do. Do you end up with a library of really creepy reference material, like diseases or ways in which you're looking to replicate? I often wonder about that if ever anybody sort of looked up, you know, I don't know how much people can see what you're looking up on the internet, but I often <laughs> w wonder what they think about me. You know? Yeah, you go, you're always looking at, you know, sort of dead people and, you know, forensic photos and yeah. all, which I'm sure like most people who do what we do look, look at and, and rashes and diseases and, you know. I have a friend who's a scenic artist and like we'll be walking down the street. I remember at one point we crossed yeah. a bridge and there was some lichen yeah, growing yeah, on the side yeah. of the bridge and he's like, I gotta stop. It's, yeah, photograph took that. Some pictures. Yeah, yeah. Do you find yourself doing yeah, that? Oh yeah, all the time. I've got constant, and especially I find with trees in Australia, the gum trees and all that, they have amazing patterns on the bark and you know, oh, you're thinking of that as, ref as I, inspiration. I use it, yeah, for colour and reference, all that, yeah. I, I, I think I generally find a lot of reference in nature and architecture too, you know. Any more people would like to come here and have a moment? I think uh, Bruno's going to pull this off down. Now I heard that you've had an issue, or at least there's been some problem solving involved in the sweat. <laughs> I laugh about it because I go, oh, every movie I do, there's so much sweat, you know, it's like bucket loads of sweat. <laughs> and and all directors love lots of sweat, and especially this really? movie. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. Oh, they, they, when you're doing sweat, yeah, they want lots, you know. So I was thinking, like, what am I going to use? Because, you know, otherwise you're constantly putting water and it's just dripping off and dripping off. And So I wanted something more than that. So I started playing with um, gloss, like lip gloss, like really heavy, lip, yeah. you know, sticky lip gloss and with a big sponge, big, you know, with lots of holes in it, and just going like this, you know, so I'd get little balls beads rather than, yeah, little life. beads, yeah, rather than, you know, sort of all over, and so that, especially if you had side light, that stand out really well, so I started playing with that, and then I went, I'm oh, really gonna have to have more, and so I just, I ended up, I had, um, I think it's called wet, and I ended up with just like, um, a waxing spatula, you know, they use uh -huh. for waxing legs. And yeah. things. I ended up with that and just whoosh, like icing a cake all over wow. their faces. And then I got the spatula and sort of hit it like that. So you got this, you know, ruffled, sort of rumpled, I don't know what the word is, like, you know, sort of rough effect anyway. Yeah. And you've got a really good, really good, like, sweaty, wet looking character without it all running, you know. I hear you've been trying to protect your cash of I know, sweat. Well, do you know, but there was only five jars, like, I had jars, kilo jars like this. There was only five in Australia, so I went, sh you know, taking those. <laughs> yeah. I'm amazed, it, it just, it, it hadn't occurred to me that so much problem solving would be needed for something with a seemingly as straightforward as actors looking sweaty. Sweaty, I know, and e each time it's different. So, you know, if you just want them a little sweaty, we've been using the gloss, some, Actors only want water, you know, they won't, oh, they really? say no, you know, not putting anything else and we just water and, and you know, sometimes we try to mix a little something, but just, yeah. So Michael Fassbender plays two characters mm. in this film, Walter and David. How do you approach that kind of challenge? That was a big challenge. There was a lot of discussion, you know, initially about that with Ridley and with Michael. And um, a lot of things were bandied around, a lot of ideas, you know, 
do we just leave them as you know directly like exactly the same like they came out of the same mold right. you know um, or you know what's happened with the character during the course of the story the journey you know where, like where is he at now and there was a lot of things you know we discussed a lot of things we sort of ideas we put up Michael came up with this great idea that he just let himself go you know and that his hair had grown so the color that it had been in Prometheus was the now like, like mine is now you know a bit yeah. of regrowth and then longer so and so we went like that we went a wig for um David like you know, a Tarzan and, wig <laughs> yeah yeah well now you'll wait and see oh, okay <laughs> but it's like yeah and then you know, during the course of the, the story, he sort of changes and becomes, he sort of looks at um, Walter when Walter arrives and, you know, it's all part of the story, but yeah. he um, then cuts his hair and becomes very much exactly like him. Sorry, I yeah. can't believe I'm this dumb, but I realize, of course, you're telling the story. Yeah. You're telling just as important a story as he is with the acting, with how he looks and how yeah, that exactly. look ends up being. Yeah, and then, and so he plays the two characters, I think, and Michael plays them with a different accent. When he's Walter, um, we have him very smooth and very, you know, we're saying he's like a silicone skin or something right. like that. And a real short, doll. short, yeah, short, neat hair, you know. And when he's David, he's gone feral. So we don't, we have a skin a little rougher and a bit of red coming through. And there's almost a shadow, like he doesn't actually grow stubble, but it's almost like wow. a shadow. You know, and, and he's got dirty and grungy. He's let himself go. He's gone a bit feral, you know. As, as I said, hasn't been serviced. His wiring's going a bit weird, you know. So you have all these little things like that, but you can't take it too far because if we're changing from one angle to the other, we've got to have that quick change like theatre, you know. Right. So we can't do go to too greater extent because mm -hmm. it's got to happen. They kept saying to us when, um, you know, we had ideas or things and, of course, you know, from producers would come back to us and say, how long's that going to take? You know, and you'd, go, <laughs> you'd go, oh, the 20 minutes? No, that's too long. You know, it's got to happen in like 10, 15. Wow. You know, it's like doing quick changes for theatre, but you'll go backwards and forwards maybe three, four times in a scene, you know. And then, of course, every decision that you make means you've got to do doubles and lighting. Everything's the same. You every do the, dub, the stunt double, the picture double, so if there's a change on him, everybody else changes over too. So wow. it's a... A cascading domino effect. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Uh, but it's good, yeah, so it's, you know, all those things, as I said, we hit on it a little bit with the, the bloods and the wounds and different things that happen. Like, we, I guess you rely, or we rely a lot on Michael and Ridley to make those decisions for us about what actually happens to these right. you know, synthetics. And, right. Because they, they know it better than anyone. And as I said, I wasn't involved with the previous stuff, so I'm a newbie and um, I rely a lot on you know, listening to them and the getting from them. Model. Yeah, yeah. Now, I also heard that there's gallons and gallons of blood on this film. Does, yes. does, that, that must make your job a lot harder. Well, yes and no. I mean, that's what part, part of my department love that, you know, it's like, but it comes like from basically special effects make it and um, Connor makes it up and yeah. all that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen more blood than I've ever seen in my life on this film. And <laughs> it's like, and every set sometimes his explanation is, you know, I want gallons of blood more than that was in the med bay, you know, and you go, more than that was in the med bay? Yeah. <laughs> is that possible? Like, it is gallons and gallons of blood.